Welcome to Corkin Today for August 13th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. If you want to read these stories for yourself, come up with your own opinions. I'll put a link to each story I talk about in the order I talk about them down in the show notes down below. If you're new here, hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. It helps us a lot because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV. And still enjoy the shows you want to watch. Again, I know we have a lot of new people here subscribing. Thank you so much. We should hit 90,000 subscribers today, so thank you for that. But I'm on the road, not in the office this week, seeing some family, so we'll be back in the office next week with a normal setup and everything, so bear with me. The audio and video is not perfect. All right, let's dive into some deals real quick. Um, TCL has been clearing stock of some of their older Roku models, and they have the 5 Series on sale, the 49-inch. Um, one for $299. This is the lowest price ever for this TV. And some people were saying, well, there's another Roku TV with this or that uh, that's cheaper. And often those are the four series, which are a considerable step down from the five series. So it's um, three very basic entry level fours, fives, which is kind of higher end, brings in some of the new higher end technology and the six series right now from TCL is the high end Roku TV. So this is actually a good price for a good quality TV. So check it out. I know a lot of people were wondering about what makes this TV different. Um, it's the picture quality, the processor, the, all that kind of stuff that goes into it. Um, so check that out. Link in the show notes down below. Also, if you've been thinking about trying YouTube TV, YouTube TV is offering a 14-day free trial. It ends tomorrow if you're watching this when I publish it on the 13th. So if you haven't tried YouTube TV before, new subscribers can get a 14 day, two week free trial of YouTube TV to see if it's right for them. Link it to all that in the show notes. All right, let's dive into this because something, uh, a scam that's been targeting Roku owners for a while has kind of moved on to the Amazon Fire TV. Uh, for some time, you've probably heard of the fake Roku tech support websites who try to convince you to subscribe to services you don't need, try to tell you if you want to use your Roku, you have to pay a yearly subscription, or if you want to activate it, that's $150. Now, not all tech support sites and all tech support phone numbers are scams. There are some that are very legitimate that offer real tech support and charge for it. That's no different than driving down to your local computer shop in your town and saying, hey, I need help with my Dell. They didn't make the Dell, but they'll fix it for a fee. The problem with some of these scams comes in when they try to convince you the only way to maybe activate your Roku or Fire TV or the only way to get tech support is to sign up for the subscription service, this, that, or the other thing, which you don't need. When they try to you know, convince you to pay for stuff you don't need is when I would consider that a scam. So keep that in mind. There are legitimate websites and companies that offer legitimate tech support. And then there's ones that are not. The problem here is on Google a lot. When you Google Amazon um, tech support or, or Amazon Fire TV tech support, customer service and more, the links on the website, even the suggested phone number, don't go to Amazon. This, the featured snippet goes to a third party website. I don't know, it could be 100% legitimate, but it's confusing a lot of people because you know you click on this website, it's a big picture of Fire TV, it's in the Fire TV colors and more, and it confuses them. Um, and it's not just one. There's many websites out there, many um, Facebook messages about, oh, Amazon can help you call this number and more. And it really comes down to you know, people legitimately want help. They use Google, they Google uh, for Amazon's customer service and they find companies that are Amazon. So keep a close eye on this. A lot of companies are out there trying to make you think they are Amazon. Now, some of these are legitimate. I've run into several great ones where it's like, hey, we offer support for streaming players, a fee and more, which, and they do a really good job at it. And, then, and these websites on Google may be perfect but the problem is when the ones that aren't, the ones that are trying to convince you to pay, be very careful. This was a scam that targeted Roku. Roku's been actively going after companies who um, use their name and their logos and stuff without permission. And that's kind of cut back a lot on that. Now it seems like they said, well, Roku isn't quite the easy bet it used to be. Let's go after the Amazon Fire TV. And they're doing the same tactics to the Amazon Fire TV. So keep that in mind. Again though, um, many websites and maybe even those ones on Google are 100% legitimate. The problem is you may think you're contacting Google, 
or Amazon, but you're not because you Googled it, the first link that, you know, the big featured snippet doesn't go to Amazon. So keep that all in mind. If you have a question on that, let me know. Leave me a comment down below. Have you run into a situation on the Fire TV where you Google for support, you get a phone number that Google recommended, and then only to find out that that wasn't Google and they try to, or Amazon, excuse me, and they try to talk you into paying for something you don't need. Let me know your story. I'd love to hear from you. All right, next story up of the day, the Roku channel, which is Roku's free ad-supported streaming service, is adding five new channels. These include Fubo Sports Network, the ACC Digital Network, I'll get to that in a minute, USA Today, Now This, Comedy Dynamics, and one paid subscription you can now manage through your Roku channel, which is Sports Illustrated um, TV. Um, ACC Digital Network is a companion network to the ACC Network, which is launching in about a week from now, next week. And it will include a ton of the content that won't air on the ACC Network. So this is not a free stream of the ACC Network, but just much, uh, very similar to how there's ESPN and the ESPN3. You now have the ACC Network and the ACC Digital Network, which will include um, a spectrum of the nation's um, or sports featuring original and on-demand content throughout the entire year is how Roku described it. So don't be confused that this is the ACC Network. That is going to be on YouTube TV, Hulu, and PlayStation View at launch. Of course, another network could pop up there. There's still time before the service launches. Uh, but this is a great option. Of course, you have Fubo Sports Network, which launched recently with a wide range of different sports. USA Today, their news coverage there. Um, now this, another um, news brand out there. Comedy Dynamics bringing um, the network is a tastemaker for stand-up comedy specials, TV shows, films, and documentaries featuring a wide range of established and emerging comedian talent. So pretty great additions here to the Roku channel. I'd love to know, do you use the Roku channel? It's on other devices than Roku now. And I'd love to know what you think of it. What's your favorite content on the Roku channel? I've been very pleased with the quality of the Roku channel. I'd love to know what you think. All right, next story up of the day, the FCC has announced an additional $137.2 million investment into rural high-speed internet. Now, um, FCC has been working very hard to encourage this. The problem, you know, a lot of people ask, why does the FCC need to spend money? Why can't just Comcast or somebody spend the money themselves? The problem is um, in some very rural areas, we're talking truly rural areas, not a town of 20,000 people, it, it can be uh, hard to make a profit, to be honest with you. If you have to run, you know, if I'm in New York and I run a mile of cable, I can sign up 100, 200 customers in that mile of cable. Um, but if I go and go in a subdivision and run a mile of cable, I can sign up 30 customers maybe. I go in a rural area and I may run 10 miles of cable to subscribe to get one person. I may have to run another 10 miles to get another person to subscribe. So the cost here is um, very, it's not always efficient to do that. Now, this was the same issue when phone lines came out. You know, phone companies said, hey, it's not practical for us to wire all these um, farms that are miles and miles apart between each other, or these people living in cabins, or a town of 200 people. So the FCC had created this phone, uh, this surcharge on your phone bill, which went to spreading phone plans. Well, that's kind of run its course. Phone lines are pretty much out there where we need them now. And now they're saying, hey, we got all this money, it's not doing anything, let's take that money and apply it to the internet. So the money on your phone bill that goes to bringing phone lines to rural Americans has now been moved to bringing rural Americans high-speed internet. And I think this is a great thing because it is true. It is, you know, if you're a business, you're not gonna um, sign somebody up that loses you millions of dollars, right? If I have to run all this cable and it's gonna cost me 20 some years to break even on this, Plus, um, then I have to service that line in the 20 years and maybe that per pushes out the uh, break even point to 30 years down the road because something will break, this will happen, that will change. So I can see why um, this is a good thing. So um, keep in mind, this is money that was earmarked for phone expansion is now being earmarked for internet expansion. So love to know, uh, in the post down below, we break down the different areas. There's some Indian tribes that are gonna get some help here. Um, Pennsylvania is going to get uh, money to bring gigabyte internet to 7,000, over 7,000 homes and businesses. Um, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, West Virginia, um, upstate New York, 
and a few other areas um, are being included also. So full breakdown in the post down below if you want to learn more about it. I'd love to know what you think of this. Are you excited that we're using this money that's been sitting there? It's earmarked for a particular purpose. It's not being used for other reasons, supposedly. And now it's going to be used for high-speed internet. I think this is great. I think this is a good thing to do competition effort there. All right. Um, speaking of the growth of core cutting, uh, today, or, or this week, excuse me, the Leachman Group, I believe it was, announced, um, yeah, Leachman Research Group. I want to make sure I gave credit where credit is due. Released a report looking at the total growth of core cutting in the second quarter of 2019, according to the calendar year. According to them, over 1.5 million Americans canceled cable TV in the second quarter of 2019. This is up dramatically from the 420,000 subscribers that did it in the second quarter of 2018. So we more than tripled the growth of core cutting in 20. 19 versus the same period in 2018. That's really great news. If we continue this rate of growth, core cutting will grow by over 6.12 million American households over the next year. Now that assumes there's no continued growth, right? That we just kind of plateau in the same, we just kind of keep growing at the same rate, which hasn't been happening. Uh, there's been many reports that core cutting will top 40 million American homes, um, but cable is still going strong. There are still over 80 million Americans still paying for a traditional cable TV provider. You know, this is very interesting because a few months ago, uh, back in April, min the digital TV research group um, said that core cutting would slow down. Uh, they predicted that in 2018, uh, 3.8 million Americans cut the cord, and they said in 2019, only 3 million Americans would cut the cord. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, at with now over two some million people already cutting the cord in the first half, even if core cutting were to suddenly slow down. The reality is core cutting would easily top four million um, this year. So keep, keep that in mind, I'm very interested to see what happens. Often core cutting sees growth later in the year as people try to look forward to the 2020 year and say, hey, you know, where can we cut this money? How can we save this year? Christmas is coming up and more. So I'd love to know, did you cancel cable in the first half of 2019? Uh, why? What? If you haven't, do you plan to do it in the second half of 2019 and why? I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know what drove you. And what do you think? Um, do you, th you know, have you been hearing more and more people cut the cord? Do you think it's growing or is slowing down? I'd love to know what you think of that. And the last story up of the day real quick, PlayStation View has reportedly reached a deal with the NFL Network but is warning that NBA TV could be next. So last month, Sony announced that PlayStation View and NFL Network had to strike a new deal. Um, according to reports, they struck an extension at the end of the month to give them more time to finish negotiations, very common tactics. And now on the 12th of August, um, they finally removed the warning that they had until the end of July. All, all my sources are telling me that there's a final deal in place now that will keep the NFL Network on PlayStation View. Um, and that there was a temporary holdover to get the deal, um, to keep NFL Network on PlayStation View so they had time to get a real deal in place. Great news is the NFL season is about to kick off, that we won't be losing the NFL Network anytime soon, but that we um, need to keep a close eye on uh, the NBA TV now. So NBA TV cordless in September will be coming up for renewal, including 11 sports, which a lot of people are like, what's 11 sports? It's another sports network. I think they do a lot of mortar racing um, kind of uh, shows. They have a wide range of sports on there. So this is a pretty good offer here. Um, I'll be interested in to see uh, how the NBA uh, negotiations go. Again, bad timing for PlayStation View. Contracts coming up right as the NBA season's getting going. I always hate to have to negotiate with a deadline on the end of Sony. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, but the good news is PlayStation View is keeping the NFL Network, according to the updated post on Sony's website. Again, though, Sony, not very good at communication, hasn't really come out with an official statement. They put this big warning on, but when the time comes to say it's everything's done, all they do is pull down the warning and we have to rely on sources that we've worked with for years to try to fill us in on exactly what's happening. So Sony, email us. We'll be happy to uh, let everybody know what's happening straight from you. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Couple other news stories to keep an eye on. 
Um, CBS and Viacom will reportedly announce a merger today. Uh, now we've covered this. Uh, according to CNBC, everything is set. Our announcement's coming today. But at the time of this recording, no announcement was made. So we're keeping a close eye on that. There's some other news stories we're watching very closely. So check out corecarsnews.com to make sure you don't miss any of those news stories that we're keeping an eye on right now when they do eventually break. So thank you for your subscription. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell if you um, haven't so you don't miss any of our videos. We'll be back soon. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. I will see you tomorrow.